Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, Lord, our Lord, you are the radiance of the Eternal Father. You enlightened the world with your divine teachings and filled it with knowledge through the simplicity of your apostles. Make us worthy to praise you as we celebrate the feast of your chosen apostles, Peter and Paul. By their witness, may we come to understand your hidden mysteries and keep your life-giving commandments, that we may be made worthy to share in their happiness. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. To the Father most holy, who sent his only begotten Son for our salvation, and to the glorious Son who chose Peter and Paul and filled them with wisdom and holiness and sent them out to preach, and to the Holy Spirit who strengthened and supported them in their apostolic mission. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. O oh Christ, our God, you were sent to us from the Father. You are the high priest whom we profess as the merciful and forgiving one. You chose twelve apostles and by your Holy Spirit made them wise. You sent them to proclaim the gospel of life and salvation. You honored Peter and Paul and two of your chosen apostles and true witnesses. Peter and Paul are two temples, and in them dwells the Spirit of God, the Word who became flesh. Peter and Paul are two jewels adorning the crown of the Holy Church, the Bride of Christ. Peter and Paul are two strong pillars upon which the Holy Church has been built. Now, O Lord, we ask you through their intercession and with the fragrance of this incense to look upon us with the eyes of mercy and not to forsake us who implore you. Strengthen the weak, help the sick, and satisfy the hungry. Bring back those who are far and protect those who are near. Forgive sinners except those who repent and pardon our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest. May we who worship you be united with your chosen apostles Peter and Paul, with your mother, the Virgin Mary, and all the choirs of the prophets, apostles, and martyrs. You are good and compassionate, and we raise glory to and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever.
apostles Peter and Paul, as we celebrate your feast, we ask you to raise in your own hands the fragrance of this incense, which we have offered, that it may be a sweet fragrance and a pleasing sacrifice. Through your intercession, may God forgive our sins and favorably remember all the children of the Holy Church, now and forever. Kaddishat Aloha Kaddishat Shout with joy from the mountains, the apostles preached good news. Offer praise to the Lord God, may he help us through their prayers. On the rock of St. Peter, Jesus built his holy church. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to the Lord of Paul, Peter, Paul, and the apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, to to my shame, I say that we were too weak. But what anyone dares to boast of, I am speaking in foolishness, I also dare. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I'm talking like an insane person. I am still more with far greater labors far more imprisonments, far more beatings and numerous brushes with death. Five times at the hands of Jews, I received 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I passed a night and day on the deep. On frequent journeys in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my own race, dangers from Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers at sea, dangers among false brothers and sisters, in toil and hardship, through many sleepless nights, through hunger and thirst, through frequent fastings, through cold and exposure. And apart from these things, 
there is daily pressure upon me of my anxiety for all the churches. Who is weak and I am not weak? Who is led to sin and I am not indignant? If I must boast, I will boast of things that show my weakness. Praise be to God always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, who proclaim life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Apostle Matthew writes, when Jesus had gone into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, whom do men say that the Son of Man is? And they replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But he said to them, but whom do you say that I am? And Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him in answer, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, You are Kepha, and upon this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of Haiti of Sheol shall not prevail against it. I shall give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Messiah. This is the truth, peace be with you. Whom do men say that the Son of Man is? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. We forget often how much the spirit of wisdom teaches us in conflict. 
As I was traveling on the planes this week back and forth to Miami, yes, it was Miami, it was actually breaking heat records, 90% humidity, and there were fires in the forest, and so the sky was never actually blue, it was kind of an ashen grayish blue. So there, if you were worried about Miami, we spent all the time in meetings in any case. It could be in Iowa, as I said to many people, it doesn't make any difference. But on the plains, you know, you have young families there who are trying to corral children for these trips. And you watch the little ones during that hour that you're waiting for the flight, you watch them, they go between giggling to screaming and throwing their body on the floor. And usually within the period of just, you know, a fraction of a second. And in many ways, we still live that way. What we have as benefit as adults, of course, is we have, we have experience. But I'm not sure if we actually penetrate into the understanding that the suffering, whatever caused this child his turmoil and his anguish, he doesn't understand anything in it. And so we just swing back and forth from this joy until just agony. But of course, in our lives as we grow older, within those agonies, those disappointments, this mis those misunderstandings, the Spirit of God is still speaking to us. Because of our sentimentality, our sentimentalism by which many people in the modern world approach religion, they think of religion as only a, a, a set of feelings. And we forget that God teaches us, and our Lord said very clearly, if you want to learn from me, if you want to be my disciple, take up your cross and follow me daily. He's inviting us to crucifixion. But notice it's keyed with the word, if you wish to learn from me, to be my disciple. Disciple is a learner. Technically, that's what the word means. If you want to learn from me, you have to be crucified with me and follow the same path that I follow. He's telling us in that phrase that wisdom is to be found herein. So the child is flopping on the ground and screaming and howling and carrying on. They're in what they perceive as being an uncomfortable, painful situation, but they're not learning anything from it. But how many adults go through their lives that way? When things are disappointing, they just simply howl. Not as a two-year-old, of course. We learn a little bit of sophistication as to howl. And so it can be griping, we're somber, we're just simply always snarky. We have different ways of expressing it, but not so volatilely as, you know, howling and falling on the ground. And the reason why I bring it up is because with Saints Peter and Paul, if you read, read St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, he tells you very clearly they had their own moments, we would say these days. And this confrontation that takes place between the two of them, it is completely rooted in charity, but it is still a misunderstanding and a conflict between the two. And St. Paul corrects Peter at a moment in Antioch. St. Paul, when you read the letter to the apostles, St. Paul, after his conversion in Damascus, he goes back to Jerusalem, now baptized and totally transformed within the gospel. And we're told in the, in the Acts of the Apostles that when St. Paul is in the temple himself, he goes into a trance in his prayer, in this meditation, as he's praying before the altar of God, before the temple of God, and our Lord appears to him. And he says, you don't stay here. They will not accept what you have to say to them, to teach them. I'm sending you to the pagans. You will carry my word to them. And so St. Paul is basically, by our Lord, thrown out of Jerusalem, the city that he has been in since a teenager, learning and studying to be a rabbi before our Lord blinds him and waylays him outside of Damascus. And then later on, when St. Paul is traveling, he has with him Barnabas and he has with him John, not John the Apostle, but another one called John Mark. And there's a point when they have disagreements on to what is the next town we're going to go to, what's going to be the excursion for our itinerary for bringing the gospel. And John and Barnabas are cousins. So Barnabas tends to side more with his cousin. And you have this whole point of disagreement. And so that in a later trip, a later apostolic journey, John Mark wants to come along again. Clearly, he's a younger, younger man. And Paul says, no way. You ditched us once on the last trip and you left. You're not going on this one. And that's it. 
But within it, who does John mark then being, you know, in a sense, dissociated from Paul? He becomes the translator of St. Peter. And he's the author of the gospel that we call Mark. His name is Jehannon. His name is John Mark. He has a Hebrew name and he has a Roman name. He speaks Greek and he's the translator for St. Peter. He travels with him. He's in Rome with him, which is where he writes his gospel. And after Peter's martyrdom, St. Mark goes down and is the founder of the church in Alexandria. The spirit of wisdom is always teaching us. If John Mark, even in that misunderstanding, if these men had not been disposed to hear the voice of God and to follow the inspiration that God gives to lead, where would they have been? St. Mark probably just would have continued on with St. Paul. He would never have written the gospel. And he certainly would be founder of the church in Alexandria in Egypt. And so when we have conflict and misunderstanding, that's not a problem. It's part of human life. The question is, is how do we deal with it? What do we do with it? Do we actually use it to the benefit, as St. Paul says, that for those who love God, everything works to good. Everything. Even in the end, their martyrdom, which is what we're commemorating when we celebrate Saints Peter and Paul, is these two men who had their moments, but who are pillars of the church, and in the descriptions of the, our prayers in the morning office of Saints Peter and Paul, in the Safro, in the morning office, it refers to Peter as being that foundation block, Kepha, the foundation block, the stone upon which the spiritual temple of God is built. And Paul is the builder of this edifice upon this stone. These are the two pillars who build the foundation. But they're men. You know the famous story of Peter that when the, the persecutions of Nero broke out, he actually fled the city. He left. Who wants to die? Especially non, as a non-citizen, he's going to be treated to the most horrible ways possible, like our Lord. Paul winds up being beheaded because he's a Roman citizen. And you can't crucify a citizen. But, Paul, but Peter, he's nothing. And in the end, Peter will be crucified upside down. But you know the story that when Peter leaves and he runs and he's fleeing from the city, and as he arrives just outside in the juncture in the Via Appia, he sits down. And he notices a man walk by on the road going towards the city. And when he looks up and sees this man, he realizes it's our Lord. And he asks him, Quo vadis domine? Where are you going, Lord? And our Lord answered, I'm going back into the city to be crucified in your place. And so Peter understood at that point he needed to stay with the community in, Jerusalem, in, in Rome and he re-entered the city and subsequently was arrested during the persecutions and crucified upside down in the stadium that used to be, if you look at St. Peter's the way it's arranged, there's actually a stadium that used to run diagonal from where the audience hall is across the plaza in front of the church, which is why the church is where it's at because there was a cemetery next to the stadium and that's where they went to get Peter's body and cut off his feet and took his body away because it was easier than getting the nails out of the foot bones. And the body was placed in the cemetery next door. So up until the very moment, our Lord appears to Paul, tells him, you have to leave Jerusalem. Our Lord at the end of Peter's life appears to him and said, you have to go back into the city. We learn from these kinds of conflicts. So over these weeks, we've been talking about presence, hearing, the ability to able to listen. If you look at this gospel again, notice how our Lord phrases the questions. When he talks about people, who do men say that the Son of Man is? So he asks us in a question, it's an indirect thing. What do they say about this? And these people are religious. They give religious answers, but they're all wrong. So that's why, you know, just simply knowing something about religion, knowing the Jesus story is not enough. The religion still gets the wrong answers. Oh, he's John the Baptist, you're Elias. You're one of these prophets who have come back from the dead. Is that what they're answering? And then our Lord answers. So you notice the first question is indirect, but the second question is, but who do you? 
say that I am. Of course, he is the son of man. But now there's a personal relationship here that he's asking. That's that connection. Who do you say that I am? How, what have you learned here? And that's when he says, you are the Messiah. You're the son of the living God. And so it's that aspect of listening and that presence and that reciprocated wisdom which is given to us enlightenment. And the only way we learn that enlightenment is through our prayers and in that proximity to God. Which is why we've talked. I've made jokes about being at camp during the summer. You know, the sun comes up and then we all just disappear from the divine liturgy. And it's tragic because God is not only as existent in July as he was in January, he's just as important. Notice the prayer look in the red books today. What do we do? We pray for those who are far. And we ask for protection for those who are near. It doesn't mean you're on a trip to Ireland, that they're far. It means those who are spiritually wandering. They may be baptized, but the questions asked to them by our Lord are all indirect. What does that man think about me? He has no association, but you, the apostles who have been with me, who do you think that I am? And it's that beautiful depth of understanding of that reciprocated communication that we've talked about so often in these last few weeks that comes to a beautiful example in Saints Peter and Paul. Because it also shows us that human understanding of that path. These are men. They lived, they died, they had mothers, they had diapers to be changed when they were little. They preached the gospel and established something that we have the possibility of salvation now. And so in our lives, obviously we can't duplicate the life of Peter and Paul, but we can imitate it. And imitation means that certain qualities and characteristics we can model ourselves on. St. Peter and Paul are totally unique. Of all the billions of human beings on the face of the earth, there will never be any two like that who will ever have a possibility of doing what they did. And yet we can imitate it in many ways, and in this whole context, do our lives have the same fruitfulness and patience in misunderstandings and in difficulties to still bear fruit? And in bearing fruit, that is how the gospel is passed on to others around us and to a next generation. So we are still benefiting from the fidelity of these two men who both probably died in their 60s and yet left a mark on the earth which is absolutely extraordinary not because of who they were in themselves, but because of their proximity. They were near to the Lord. And that proximity is what gives them that power and that wisdom. That we can duplicate. We can be an imitation of staying close to our Lord in our daily prayers, morning, night, the contemplation of the rosary, and of course in the divine mysteries, where we are face to face with the Lord Christ himself substantially. And that is how we are transformed. Do we notice it? No. Only after, when we were in adolescence and our pants didn't fit and we were too tall and we just kind of shot up and your mother was just shaking your head because she had to keep buying clothes. That growth we noticed had nothing to do with us as long as you had a good diet. But the psychological and the emotional and the spiritual development, that we don't perceive very well. But it is always that presence and that contact which is certainly fruitfully developing us. And in that fruitfulness, we pass on. And that's what we mean by witness. We give testimony. This is true. People will ask you, do you talk about anything else other than religion? Well, when they ask me that question, it's like, yeah, sometimes, but that's not really what I'm here for. You know, you don't talk about baseball, call your cousin. All right. But that centrality of giving testimony by the lives that we live is absolutely extraordinary in its capabilities and its possibilities, in which, sadly, many of us don't believe in. Because if we believed in it, Maine would be Catholic. It doesn't take numbers, it doesn't take great computer ingenuity and websites to spread the gospel. In fact, it's even questionable if they even do much other than tell you where a church is at or give you something to read. But ultimately, the testimony of the people, 
But remember, testimony in the Greek is the word martyr. Martyr means testimony, witness. And that's what we're called to do in imitating Peter and Paul. So on this day, we ask for their intercession, that they obtain for us the sense of peace and the desire for wisdom that comes in conflict, in disappointment, in misunderstanding. But that within that patience and within that desire for wisdom that we actually be taught, who do you say that I am? And in doing that, we ask that the apostles intercede for us so that they, therefore, from that point, we can give a testimony, we give a witness of this life-giving gospel, and by doing so, life is spread to others. So that in the year 4019, the people who will be before the divine liturgy will have you to thank for it because you, in your generation, communicated by your own testimony and kept that flame of wisdom and healing grace alive. And so that your great, 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 whatever it's gonna be for another 2,000 years will have benefited from that fatality. It's not easy, it is doable. And with the intercession of the prayers of Saints Peter and Paul, completely given to us to do in our own generation. So may their prayers be a rampart to us always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Telvot madeb he daloho, valvot aloho na paletamio. Reino zvot aivoto, feo le baitok meskude, haye plod gole. Oh, my God. 
Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you. Out of their love for you and for your holy name, shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. Amen. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saints Peter and Paul. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom the sacrifice is offered for the repose of Edward de Vito. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Merciful and holy Lord and Father, through your only begotten Son, you have prepared this spiritual banquet for us. Accept the offering of this bloodless sacrifice and grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and divine love that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to your holy altar of God. Peace 
to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. peace and security in your true love and divine mercy be with us and among us all the days of our lives that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever Amen. O Lord we bow before you and ask you to look upon us with mercy make us worthy to approach your holy altar with pure hearts and holy souls and bodies that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your Spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to glorify and praise you, O God the Father, for you are holy and the giver of life. You are blessed with your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit. You are surrounded by the cherubim and seraphim who sing with pure voices and heavenly melodies. They cry out, glorify, and proclaim. Father, full of mercy, holy is your only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and holy is your life-giving Spirit. You are holy and the giver of all that is good. For our salvation, your only begotten Son became flesh of the pure Virgin Mary, and by his divine plan he saved and redeemed us. Kurie eleison. Wabiyamu haudoktum khashodi le ma bed khaye. En sabe lachma beda kori shanto. O bara hukade. Waksoya bel talmi dao kado maro. Sab et ato akhul mene kulhu. O no denita Bahuru dila Dahlo faiku wahlo sagiye Metakase o meti heba Hosoyan haube wa hain al alam alamin O 
Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do so in memory of me until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We confess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O Lord, lover of all people, we remember your plan of salvation. And we ask you to have mercy on your worshipers and to save your inheritance when you appear at the end of time, to reward all people justly according to their deeds. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you, implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father. Have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. Highest the sense he may make this brand the body of Christ our God. The mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God. Amen. May these holy mysteries be for the forgiveness of sins, the healing of souls and bodies, and the strengthening of consciences, so that none of your faithful may perish. Rather, make us worthy to live by your Spirit and to lead a pure life. We raise glory to you now and forever. We offer you, O Lord, this divine sacrifice for your church, especially for our fathers and shepherds, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Rashad Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops of the true faith. With blameless lives and with purity and holiness, may they guide your church and present to you a faithful people who honor your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, your people here before you, especially those who have presented these offerings. Forgive them so they may always live blameless lives in your presence and recognize the blessings that you bestow upon them. For you are good and rich in graces. We pray to you, O Lord. Have mercy. Remember, O Lord, our civil leaders throughout the world, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. 
Remember, O Lord, your holy church, that you established on the solid rock of the true faith, and send her vocations to the holy priesthood and religious life, in a world of distractions which pull us away from properly loving you and our neighbor. May those whom you have called to serve your holy church respond to you and have the courage to follow your will. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, especially Mary, the Holy Mother of God, and the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, John the Baptist, Stephen the Archdeacon, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Marin, St. Peter, and St. Paul. Assist us through their prayers and make us worthy to rejoice with them in your kingdom. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers of the true faith who have endured sufferings for the sake of your church and your people. May we truly and faithfully follow in their footsteps. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the faithful departed who have left us and have gone to their rest, hoping in you, awaiting that life-giving voice, calling them to life. Accept the offerings we present to you on their behalf, and have mercy on them in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And united, O Lord, your divinity with us to majesty and Compassionate Lord, may we, your lowly servants, be made worthy to pray with purity and holiness, and to call upon you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Yes, O Lord, lover of all people, deliver us from the evil one and from his deceitful ways. And do not forsake us, lest temptation overcome us. For yours is the kingdom, with your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 
Peace be with you. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of it, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, bless your faithful people who bow before you. Deliver us from all harm and make us worthy to share in these divine mysteries with purity and holiness, that through them we may be forgiven and made holy, and we raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. The grace of the most holy trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One, one holy, holy Father, Father one, one holy Son, Son one, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth, to him be glory forever. Make us because worthy, O Lord God, God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for a new life, O Lord our God.
thank you, Lord, and praise glory to you for giving us your body to eat the living God to drink. And above all people, have mercy on us. We thank you, Lord God and Father, and we ask that this divine communion be for the forgiveness of sins and for the glory of your holy name and that of your only Son and of your Holy Spirit now and forever. Peace be with you. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, our God and Savior, you became flesh for our sake and by sacrificing yourself, you saved us. Deliver us from damnation and make us temples of your holy name, for we are your people and your inheritance. We glorify and honor you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. So we do have two announcements this morning. One, for the DeVito family who have come for the Mass today, it's a heartfelt thanks for the amount of time that Ed spent making your muffins. Everybody, I don't know, everyone's aware that there is auxiliary down in the kitchen. And so he passed away recently, so we have the Mass offered today. So I held for thanks for his service to the community 
And of course, we can give you our condolences for his passing. The second announcement, of course, is on our breath of fresh air for the last seven months. You all noticed the little tow-headed boys running around here, enlivening completely the daily mass during the week. Well, they leave us tomorrow. So you make sure you give all of your hugs to these little guys and to their parents, because it's heartbreaking that they leave us at the moment that they brought such a rejuvenation. In any case, I told them, I say again, if you don't find Shangri-La in Colorado, you know you have a loving family here to come back to, and we would be more than happy to see you back here. And bring the families from Colorado too that you're bringing to the faith. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Amen.